combined genomic and proteomic approaches to understanding membrane structure and function actually allows us to tell whether a protein is likely to be a membrane protein or not. Why would we want to do this? Well, genomic approaches to understanding cells involves genome sequencing typically, sequencing large swaths of an organism's genome, identifying where the genes are or what the genes are, and then inferring an amino acid sequence of those genes. Then we go into a database library and compare the genes we've just discovered in this new organism whose genome we're sequencing. And we ask, OK, are there any other genes with similar sequences out there in the known gene world? And maybe we won't find any. Maybe the sequence of this gene is unique so that you cannot find any near relative yet in the gene database. We have sequenced so many tens of thousands of genes that almost any new gene you sequence is likely to find at least a domain or two with some similarity in sequence to other polypeptides. But there are some genes being discovered whose proteins don't seem to bear much resemblance to other known proteins out there in the databases. But we can take a sequence of unknown function and ask about some of its physical chemical properties, and in so doing, taking a proteomic approach that is a bioinformatics approach that asks, what could this protein be doing? We could rapidly identify suspected membrane proteins. Let's take a look at how this might be done. So here's a polypeptide sequence. It's not the whole polypeptide but it's a portion of it. Let's take a look at this and ask, well, what's unusual about it? There is a region highlighted here in red that, if you look at closely, is comprised largely of hydrophobic or nonpolar amino acids. There are some of these amino acids to the left and to the right. But if you look to the left and to the right, you may recognize some amino acids that are distinctly not hydrophobic. So for example, to the left on the top line, we have ASP, which is aspartic acid, GLU, which is glutamic acid, as well as lysine and arginine. So we have two acidic and two very basic side chain amino acids off to the left, and we likewise have some arginines and some lysines and a proline, all of which are basic amino acids at the end of this portion of the sequence. These are then highly charged. The acids have carboxyl group side chains, which are dissociated, so they'll have COO minuses. The amino groups will have acquired a proton at neutral pH, of course, and will be NH3+, plus, and so they will be highly charged. These are not amino acids that can interact with a hydrophobic fatty acid tail inside the phospholipid bilayer. But the red region is exclusively nonpolar and hydrophobic and could very well interact with a phospholipid bilayer. What we've just done can be done by a computer, which will then generate what's called a hydrophobicity plot, sometimes also called a hydropathy plot, which will show the hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions in a polypeptide, in a display such as the one you see here. The darker purple highlighted region of a real polypeptide between amino acids 74 and 93 are all in the region of the y-axis that is considered more hydrophobic. So we have a scale on the y-axis of less to more hydrophobic. And you can see that there is that region which is very hydrophobic. Such hydropathy or hydrophobicity plots are being used on brand new polypeptide sequences inferred from genome sequences and for which there is no known function to at least ask whether the protein could be a membrane protein. This one could be. There are a chunk of amino acids, in fact, corresponding to the same number of amino acids highlighted in red in the sequence above, which could form a helix and span a membrane. Approximately 18 to 20 or 21 hydrophobic amino acids will form a helix whose dimensions would be just about right to span a typical plasma membrane, a typical phospholipid bilayer. So we can predict what regions of a polypeptide might span a bilayer by doing a hydropathy plot. There's that picture from the earlier slide showing the region that the hydrophobicity plot would predict would be buried in a phospholipid bilayer as an alpha helix.